Hello. I am Delusion Dispeller, and I'm going to continue our little theories on uh, the book of Proverbs. Now, we left off on Proverbs 10, and as always, I'm going to skip around just so that I can get the principle of what I want to explain to you. Starting with verse, uh, what is it? Oh, I didn't even label these verses right. I believe it is verse 12, not 2. I did make my screen bigger so I could see what I was doing, so that's probably why. Okay. Oh no, I know what I did. Okay. When I did the original Proverbs, um, verses 1 to 11, there were some things that I didn't notice. And then when I went to do 11 through 26 or 27 today, something jumped out at me. So I'm going to start by sharing those with you. First of all, in verse 2, when a narcissist is in charge, people tend to not like it very much. In my case, I was in a workplace where I had a narcissistic boss. And I can tell you, my coworkers and I did not like it. We were always on pins and needles. Um, she would pin me to the refrigerator and holler at me and shame me and do things to embarrass me and come out on the floor. We were demo people and interrupt my demos and say things in my ears when I'm trying to talk to the customers, things like that. So if you have a feeling like you're always walking on pins and needles and you don't know when the next eruption is going to take place with the narcissist in your life, or who will be the next victim of the person. That's a good indication that you're dealing with a toxic person or a narcissistic person. That will be from verse 2 of Proverbs 29. Verse 5. When a narcissist traps his or her victim, he or she eventually grow tired and weary of them sometimes. And they don't know how to let them go. So they try to create this clone type thing in you. And then if they decide you haven't quite met their need for whatever it is they wanted in this other person to be their supply source, then they have to find a way to get rid of you. The problem is they've become very much dependent on you for their own existence. Not that you're, you know, financially supporting them or whatever. You might be, but that's not what I mean. To a narcissist, to lose their supply source is like losing their existence. So they've become dependent on you and now they have to let you go because they've decided you're not suitable supply. The problem is they don't have another supply source necessarily on the side. Or maybe they do, but they're not sure if it's any better than what you are. Even though they're telling you, well, I have this other person and she's so much more suited to me. They have to try it out for a while. They have to keep their mask on for a while and get to know that person and do to them what they just got done doing to you. And it takes a lot of work to be phony and to keep on this mask for so long and then to know when to take it off and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, they get tired of you, but then they don't know how to let you go. This happened in my life with the narcissist. We had talked online for many hours and actually, I think, a whole year. And um, we finally agreed to meet. Well, once she got to know me, she decided and realized that I didn't make her look good. She was from a wealthy family, um, a ministry family, and I was not ministry material as far as she was concerned. Um, so she had to replace me. Well, the problem was she really did start having feelings for me as a friend, and she knew I had feelings for her, as much as a narcissist can have those feelings, in other words. She didn't know how to let me go because she didn't have a supply source she knew was going to work out, which was why she kept quizzing me about my former friend. Oh, do you really think we get along good? Do you really think that we're suited for each other? Um, do you really, girly, do you really think that we could be really good friends? Is she really that much like me? See, now I look back and I realize it was all basically her pruning me, or preening me, I guess you'd say, to be let go so that she wouldn't feel so bad when she let let me go because of course narcissists don't like the feeling of being guilty so she had to do everything she could um, killing me softly or break it to me gently or whatever you want to call it and she had to prepare me for that so that she would feel better when she finally did it um, verse 7 the wicked does not have empathy for people that are struggling we talked about that in the original um, video because the narcissist has no reference 
of a point to feel sad or compassionate towards somebody or feel that longing to help the other person. They just don't have that point of reference in them. So let me stop there for now and I will continue on verse 11 in just a moment. Thanks.